Hi, I'm Sock Investor Davis. Welcome to the channel and please subscribe. So I want to do a quick update on Lindy. I just posted a video about the company yesterday and I found an adjustment that needs to be made. So uh, let's just jump into that. And this is going to be the adjustment that's being made. Um, so I'm going to basically start with the end here and then we'll uh, circle back into how this came about and kind of what happened. But what I did here is I updated the green and red boxes. If you watched the previous video or if this is new to you. Uh, so the green and red boxes, uh, the green boxes are the low price to earnings valuation multiple uh, for this company. And then the red is kind of the top when it gets to that type of level in terms of price to earnings multiple. Uh, that's when you kind of want to maybe get out and then the green would be the time you want to step in. So I kept in the green line and the red line showing that's what we had originally. And once I did a little more digging, uh, yeah, it needs to be pulled down. So I'm going to just adjust this now. So the starting point was the same, but you can see it pulls back uh, quite a bit. So what happened is uh, whenever we were using our adjustments or our earnings per shares to uh, calculate these boxes and this range, well, what was happening is we saw what the analysts were putting up. So let me pull that up. Uh, we were using the analyst figures for our guidance pretty much. Um, so right here, we were just using the average in terms of its earnings. And we felt comfortable with that because when we look down a little further, we see the earnings history based on what the analysts were estimating and what actually was put out. Uh, pretty in sync here, like what the what they expected actually kind of came about. But when I dug into this, I realized that what the analysts are using here is these uh, non-GAAP adjusted earnings per share. And whenever we were using, whenever we came up with these ranges, this 35 to 47 price to earnings multiple, it's including uh, everything, right? So the analysts were using non-GAAP, taking things out, but that's not what our scale was using. So we had to put those back, those items back in and I'll cover that too. But when we do that, uh, it actually reduces the earnings per share. And so that's what happened here. Whenever we looked at this, this is now updated to what I believe about $3.21 for its earnings per share next quarter, where if we flip back to the analyst, they were saying 367. So if I go back, let me just show you kind of what was happening here. So what was happening here is there's these the adjustments, there's these other charges, these pension settlements, this purchase accounting that they label it. This is a merger that happened, I believe in 2020. Um, and so the company, they just take these out. They feel like it, it hurts the company including it. Uh, and so they give us these figures just down here, this adjusted earnings per share. And that's also what the analysts were doing. I thought the analysts would do it uh, the right way, or I guess uh, I thought they were going to do it the same as what's kind of being recorded in this information that I plugged in. Uh, but anyway, so there's just a difference there. So we've updated that and all of these figures just pulled back some. So I would say a perfect example would be here was 13. It's 1375 now as a 2024 guide, but what we originally had and same as the analysts, they were showing about 1545 and that's what the company told us. And once we factor these items back in, to make it a gap standings, then we get to this 1375. So I feel more comfortable with this figure. And so this also, now we'll focus on this column here. Uh, 
these are now the price targets that I'm looking at. So for a low right now, uh, the ideal would be 446. That would be perfect for us uh, going into next quarter, that is. And so to be right around 465, still a good price, you know, not much has changed. It's just, um, it's made the floor come down a little bit, not too much, but it's definitely brought down the ceiling also. Uh, so going into next quarter, the range now would be about 446 up to 599, where as before, um, I believe this was like 367. Uh, you can see that just took off about $20. So that kind of happened throughout this. Uh, for the full year, it was a little more aggressive, I guess, because or originally we thought this was gonna be like $15. Well, now it's actually like $13.75. So um, again, just all the price ranges pulled down. So um, we'll see how this kind of plays out, but I feel like this is a more accurate reading um, and so I guess just to close with the change percentages, so, or the gain potentials, I, again, it didn't change all that much, but we can definitely see the numbers, uh, pull back a little bit. So now going into next quarter, keeping that same price as yesterday's video that, uh, now there's a potential that you might lose 4% where I think it was like 1% originally, but now with this updated, it's now. Potentially you could lose 4% between now and next quarter, and it shouldn't surprise you. But why we kind of are interested in this one is this upward potential where this could also gain close to 30% within the next quarter, and we still shouldn't be surprised by it. Like it, it's, it's within that zone. So obviously we'll see where it actually falls during this upcoming months, but we can see just the slight shift here. Then next quarter, uh, potentially minus two loss, uh, up to a 30% gain. So again, we're thinking it's probably be in the middle somewhere, mid to high teens. But you know, it'll it's a lot of it's due to timing. Also, uh, fast forwarding out to next to the full year. Uh, now we're getting into the positive where we're expecting at least a 3% gain at that point but all the way up to a 40% gain. And then 2025, again, we're getting even further out. So uh, don't, I'm not putting too much favor into this, but it, it seems reasonable for now. And that's when it really starts flowing where you would only, I would expect a minimum gain of 17% all the way up to like 57%. Uh, so it's, it, it has potential. I'll say that because it's at the bottom of the trend and I can pull this back up. So it has potential, right? We can see that, oh, let me zoom back in here. Like we can see it can go all the way up to high 500s and that wouldn't be surprising. So because it's right there closer to the bottom, uh, it is very interesting. Overall, long-term, I think other companies that I follow like a Nvidia or a Supermicro, uh, it can go up a lot faster, but again, if you're watching this one, now would be a good time in my opinion, just based on the metrics I'm looking at, because again, it could easily rally up here. I would imagine it kind of get rejected at this these levels, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it got there. So, uh, and overall, this is a good company, great margins, just want to point that out. Um, so yeah, just, let me know your thoughts, but just wanted to clarify that from yesterday. This is like a nice addition to that and gives you a better uh, understanding of our projections here. So uh, again, that wraps this up. Remember to subscribe and I will see you on the next video.